I'm Amanda Pearce, a UQ PhD student and winner of the 2012 University of Queensland Three Minute Thesis Competition. My role today is to take you through the various aspects of developing your virtual 3MT presentation for the inaugural U21 competition. In this video, I will cover instructions for filming and uploading your virtual 3MT presentation complete with your PowerPoint slide. The first step of any successful presentation is to know your material thoroughly, so you need to practice. Feeling nervous before you film is natural, and a little nervousness can be beneficial to your overall presentation. Nonetheless, it is important to practice your 3MT so that you can present with confidence and clarity. So now that you know your 3MT off by heart, you have to think about how you dress. Have you heard the saying, dress for success? Well, 3MT is no different. To convey a professional attitude, it is important to dress in a professional manner. Dress as if you would for a job interview or an important meeting. Your next step is to speak with conviction. You must really believe in what you are saying. When addressing the audience, or in this case, the camera, speak clearly and to make your presentation interesting, change the delivery and variety in your voice. Fast, slow, loud, soft. It is also very important not to rush through your presentation and to remember to pause at key points as this gives the audience time to think about what you are saying. Not only is your vocal range important, so too is your body language. It is very important to stand straight and confidently whilst presenting and to hold your head up and not to look at the floor. Avoid moving about too much and practice how you use your hands. But remember, it is important for your 3MT presentation to be delivered from a single spot as you are recording yourself. Don't make the common mistake of rolling back and forth on your heels, pacing for no reason, or playing with your hair, as these habits are distracting for the audience and will detract from your overall presentation. Now that you have written and rehearsed your 3MT presentation, it's time to record it for submission into the U21 3MT competition. Even if you're an experienced video maker or have a friend that is, it is important that you still watch and understand this section of the video as there are certain rules and standards that must be applied. If your video is outside the submission guidelines, it may not be eligible for judging. You will need to borrow some equipment to complete the recording of your presentation, including a video camera or handy cam, a clip-on lapel or tie-clip microphone, a tripod, a plain background, a painted wall will work fine, and preferably some basic lighting. You will also need a way to edit and save your video so it can be uploaded. UQ has created an acronym to help you remember the key points when recording your video. This acronym is BE SAFE and the letters stand for background, eyeline, support, audio, framing and exposure. We'll go through them one at a time. First, background. Find a plain, untextured background to stand in front of, in a quiet place, where you can concentrate and where other sounds won't be recorded. Pick a colour that is high in contrast to your own skin colour and clothing. The background must not contain words, patterns, diagrams or symbols of any kind. For best results, stand around 200 centimetres from the background. Next, eyeline. It is very important that you memorise your presentation and recite it in real time without notes. You must look at the camera lens at all times during the recording. The use of auto cue or teleprompter devices is not allowed and is easily detected by the judges. Now, to support. A steady shot is vital to the success of your video, so you should use a tripod to steady the camera. The camera should not move at any time during your presentation. For best results, extend the tripod to about chest height. Next up, audio. This is the most important part of the recording process as it is vital that your audience can hear your presentation clearly. To make sure of this, confirm that your video camera can receive a wired or wireless lapel or tie clip microphone. You should be able to borrow one from your institution's film school, 
multimedia, or journalism departments. Thread the microphone cable carefully under clothing so it is hidden, and attach the microphone capsule to the outside of clothing, on a tie, near the buttons, or on a jacket lapel. The microphone should lie somewhere between the bottom of your breastbone and the base of your neck. Do not wear jewellery or clothing which may be noisy, and keep hair and scarves away from the mic capsule. Test the mic and play back the sound through headphones or buds. It should be strong, clear and without interference. Now, framing. You are allowed one slide to be projected during your presentation. On the recorded version, your slide will be visible next to you while you are speaking to the camera. To achieve this, frame your shot so that you are standing far to one side in the frame. You may choose either side for the slide to be on, and you may gesture to it. Imagine yourself as reporting the weather and you have the right idea. If your editing program doesn't allow you to place an image partly over your shot, it is acceptable to stand in the middle of the frame and cut to your slide for up to one minute of your total presentation time of three minutes. You may cut to your slide as often as you like. Vertically, the bottom of the frame should be at waist level, with a little room above your head. Lastly, exposure. It is important that your audience be able to see you clearly and make out your facial expressions. Shoot your presentation in a well-lit area or by using borrowed lighting. With modern cameras, even a small amount of extra lighting goes a long way. After you have recorded your 3MT, it is important that you review your presentation. Check that your voice can be heard and that you are always in the frame. Look for improvements in your stance, posture and to hear where you pause or speak too quickly. Once you are happy with your presentation, it's time to edit your video, add your identifying details, add your slide and export a final file for uploading. There is a wide range of possible editing applications and you should try to enlist the help of a friend or colleague who has some experience in this area. The very first thing you should do is make sure the file type created by your camera works in the editing application you've selected. The more sophisticated the editing application, the higher chance your file type will be supported. Luckily, almost all editing applications are available as a free trial for 30 days or so. The exception is Apple's Final Cut Pro. This leaves Windows Movie Maker, Apple iMovie, Sony Vegas, Adobe Premiere Pro and Avid's Media Composer as viable alternatives. In the text below, I've included some links to help you choose, acquire and use one of these editing applications. When editing, the first task is adding a black screen for the first five seconds of your video, showing your name, the name of your presentation, your institution and your email address. Most applications refer to this as a title. Obviously, your presentation must not run for more than three minutes and you should double check this. Next, add in your slide, either next to your body or full screen, but viewable for no more than one minute in total. Lastly, export your presentation as a video file, ready for uploading. Using the format H.264 and 720p is an excellent start for high definition videos. Don't forget to check that your video is uploaded correctly. Congratulations on securing your place in the U21 3MT competition. I hope that this information has been helpful. Good luck in the competition and remember to have fun and enjoy yourself.